Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 129. Aaron, uh, we finally get to talk about some actual, real, it matters hockey in this episode. We've been doing preseason talk and training camp talk and everything else, and we finally get to go to a game. In fact, we, we got to go to a game. We got to go together, which is pretty rare. <laughs> like, Very rare. Both of us getting out at the same time and even sitting next to each other at the game. I don't Man, I can't remember the last time we actually did that. Very long time. A couple time. years ago. Yeah, yeah. so uh, awesome stuff. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about some of the players individually, like uh, Tomas Hurdle, uh, Willie Eklund, talking about uh, Jasper Weatherby had a heck of a game as well. So we're going to be talking about some individuals as well as uh, some team chemistry and how that's faring. Uh, Aiden Hill, Vlasic, and Shimmick, oh, yeah. and uh, next week's games. There you go. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, guys, join us as we uh, talk about the Sharks' quest for the first perfect 82-win season. They're on track. They're on record. Shut up. It can happen. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Tomas Hurdle here. You know, actually, I saw something from some of the fans saying uh, captain material and we'll get to the reason why in just a second. But Hurdle had a great game. He had a goal. He had an assist. Uh, not bad onto a 164-point uh, pace yeah. uh, to start the year off there, huh? Look at you. What? You and your math it, skills. Hey, come on, man. It's easy. Just <laughs> multiply it by two. Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, no, he had he had a great game. Uh, in fact, he, uh, he also showed some of the team chemistry stuff, which we'll be talking about as well. Mm -hmm. um, getting a roughing penalty when Balsers had scored his goal, and they were shoving him off of their goaltender, uh, Connor Hellebuck. And Hurdle jumps in there. He's like, I'm not having that. Gets a roughing penalty. And on the way to the box, he's pumping up the crowd. <laughs> uh, again, you know, it's kind of like some captaincy type material there. Now I'm not ready to oust Logan Couture for it. But it's nice to have that level of leadership out of the guy who's known as the fun-loving, smiley kid. Right. And there's a reason he has the A mm -hmm. on, his, on his jersey. And there can only be one C, but there could be several A's, and he is one of them. So he shows very good leadership qualities. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, you remember when he came into the league and he had those four goals? And his yep. English was not quite there yet. And so, like, oh, the poor guy, they're interviewing him and asking him stuff. And you could just see the, the blank <laughs> the blank look on his face, like, I don't know what you just said. And then what was the quote? Fun, Fun must, must be always. always. Like, right? Like, uh, that's going to stick with him forever, which is great. <laughs> uh, great guy. Uh, always fun. Always smiling. Now, this is a guy that, obviously, uh, he's in contract talks. Or not even in talks. He's, his contract is up. So... Um, if the Sharks falter, this is going to be probably the number one piece that's going to be moved uh, for a high price to get a good return if the Sharks are not going to make playoffs. And the, the, the sad thing is this is going to be the talking point probably the entire season, yeah. not, not with us specifically, but just in general, the league. So there's going to be a lot of people, especially coming towards the trade deadline of the rest of the league, going to be looking at Hurdle. Um, so he's going to have all eyes on him for a long time. Now, he did make the All-Star game two years ago when they had one. Uh, that was kind of his first introduction to the the league, like outside of kind of San Jose and out, I'd say outside of the Pacific Division. Um, and do you remember what he did at that at that All Star game? No, I do. He put a wasn't it a Brent Burns mask on. Oh, the Wookiee mask. Yeah, 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 he put a Wookiee mask on or something, right? Uh, I forget what during it was the it. shootout. Yeah, I think it was Burnsy. And that like right. it was a big crowd favorite, yeah. and everyone was kind of like, "Who is this guy? He's kind of fun." <laughs> and so that kind of put him on the map a little bit. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's going to be a big talking point all season long. Um, so get used to hearing his name a lot. Um, and again, not from us, but just in the national media because he's going to be getting more exposure now. Yeah, when I said the Wookiee mask, I was actually talking about Brent Burns. But in, it's funny because when Burns was at the All-Star game, he put an actual Wookiee mask on. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, um, enough about Hurdle there. Uh, another guy here did really awesome, got two points as well. Mm -hmm. Jasper Weatherby picks up a goal and an assist, both on the power play. That was the interesting thing to me, was that Jasper Weatherby, um, the fourth-line center, playing on power play, not just playing there, but four out of the about 10 minutes of total ice time he spent on the power play, picks up two points. Uh, must be making the coaches real happy. Power play specialist. He's oh, yeah. kind of taking over that Kevin LeBanc spot. So <laughs> we'll see uh, We'll see if he can keep that up for the season. I think it's great. It's a new look. And again, probably going back to what the coaches said, like nobody's spot is, yep. is safe. You all have to earn it. And so he, uh, he definitely earned it and had two power play points in the first game. So... Uh, he's up for a Rookie of the Year award, call oh, yeah. the trophy, right? Lead the he, league. He is also on pace for 164 points. <laughs> so, <laughs> no team has ever had two <laughs> with 10 minutes of ice time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. 10 minutes ice time average, two points a game. Sign yeah. him up. For those that don't know, like a, a forward that's getting a lot of minutes would be closer to 18 to 20 minutes. Like 
Couture had, I think, 20 yeah. minutes. That's a lot for a, a forward. Defensemen get even more, but uh, when you have a winger or a center playing 10 minutes a night, that's not a lot yeah. of... You're on the ice a lot to score a lot of points. Yeah, and, and again, for me, the crazy thing was four of those uh, 10 minutes right. on the power play. Mike, only yeah. six minutes, five on five, or otherwise mm-hmm. doing penalty kill. Um, you know, it was another interesting thing that I read. I think it was uh, it was either Kurz or Shang. Follow both of them if you're not already. Uh, but th- someone had said that Jasper Weatherby was actually there during the 2016 Stanley Cup final, San Jose against Pittsburgh. He, he was there. So was I. Yeah, he was in the building as a fan. <laughs> How cool is that, though, right? That's really cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Like, you know, basically five years ago where, you know, you're, you're sitting in there watching this team um, in the Stanley Cup final because it's kind of the team you're rooting for. And then, you know, after college is all said and done, here you are playing for them. Not just playing for them, but scoring a goal and getting an assist in your first game with that team. That's yeah. that's kind of a special thing. I mean, it's kind of cool because you got the fan perspective of especially a playoff game. A really uh, Stanley, not even playoff, a yeah. Stanley Cup final game in San Jose. So he got the full San Jose Sharks fandom treatment. So he knows what it's like to be on that side. So I'm sure he knew how special it was going to be to be playing on the Sharks and scoring any points yeah. and getting getting a goal and an assist on the power play. So uh, kudos to him, and and hopefully he's going to be sticking around for a long time because that's that's going to stick with him for a long time. Absolutely, another guy, uh, pretty special himself, uh, William Eklund. Uh, steps in. He gets an assist in this game. Um, <laughs> if you want to compare rookies, I think Eklund's still the better rookie than Weatherby <laughs> is, but uh, talent-wise, at least, yeah. I mean, he was out there and he was he was pulling some some nifty moves. He was doing lots of spins on guys. He was pulling the the Brian Campbell soupy spinorama. <laughs> yeah. uh, there was a couple times we saw him do that. He would just yeah. he would charge in hard and he'd pull up, stop, and and you know give his back to the defender mm-hmm. and and he'd protect the puck. Um, did a really fine job of that pretty much all night. Now Winnipeg. Brendan Dillon included, and who is the the tall? Who is Lurch? Six uh, foot seven. Stanley. Stanley. Last name is Stanley. Yeah, last name is Stanley. I don't know Morgan Stanley. I don't know. Um, no, <laughs> it, it's probably not. But no, he's. I mean, it's a huge dude, and they were yeah. actually kind of targeting him at times. Yeah. But they just couldn't seem to hit him. He was just too crafty. Well, I'm sure they had a scouting report on him. Like, yeah. You're gonna have to hit this guy because he's. I mean, that would be demoralizing, I think, to the Sharks if he were to go injured, especially in the first game of the season. Um, there was at least three times where they they went after him pretty hard and. Uh, there's a great quote, uh, quote from Couture last week, I think it was, mm-hmm. uh, right d- towards the end of training camp. People were asking about Eklund, like, oh, at this point he's making the team. Are you a little worried about him because he's only 172 pounds soaking wet? Like, <laughs> if he takes a hit in open ice, he, he, he can get really hurt. And Couture said it best, like, um, we'll, we'll put this quote up here, but um, I'm going to paraphrase it. But he he's basically said, like, uh, the first player that he can think of is Patrick Kane. How often do you see him getting hit in the open ice? Because they're roughly the same size, and it just doesn't happen because he eludes people so much. And we saw it to, in that game mm-hmm. where he skated around these guys and um, did a couple of those soupy moves where they where he he spun around and, and they missed him. But he was very elusive. There's a couple of times where I'm like, oh man, he's he's about to get crushed, and then he gets out of it somehow. Yeah. You're like, wow, okay, I feel better. I feel um, I don't know if safer is the right word, but I feel like more confident, confident. that he's not going to yeah. get destroyed on a nightly basis. Um, and the other thing is like all of those moves and everything. It wasn't showboaty. It wasn't. It wasn't over the top. It was. It was still elite. Like I want to say elite kind of move but without being showboaty and excessive. Um, but he looked like he belonged. Like I thought he looked very comfortable in the ice. Yeah. He looked like he belonged. And again, this is a guy coming from the, the SHL, right? Is it the Swedish yeah. Hockey League? Um, at the highest level, at 17, 18 years old, playing against men. And look like he belonged there, and that's that's it's transitioning easy for him over yeah. um, to the NHL ice. So it's great to have him on the team. I think he fits in. I said I think in the last show that I think he would get about that nine game cup of coffee. Now I'm not so sure. Now I feel like okay, Sharks look pretty good with him in the in the lineup, and he looked comfortable. Yeah. I could see him staying longer. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's not so much a question of of the skill at mm-hmm. all, right? And and you know the big question for Eklund uh, for most fans was going to be the the ice the size of the ice being you know international ice versus north american ice is he going to be able to adjust should he have time in the ahl to adjust to that uh, difference on in rink size i was kind of a proponent of that actually at first and but seeing him play it doesn't seem to be affecting him at all so um really happy with how he's been able to just kind of pick up and just go so for me it's not a question of that anymore it's not even a question of is he skilled enough right, right. is yeah. the guy skilled enough? no we've seen it he's skilled enough the main question now 
is can they do it, not just him, but all the rookies really, for 82 games. Mm -hmm. There's not really a jump that is a, a step, I should say. There's not a step to the NHL. It's a leap, mm -hmm. right? Even in the AHL where the, the talent pool is fairly similar. Yes, it's lower, but it's, it's fairly similar to the NHL. You're still not playing 82 games there. And yeah. in the SHL or in, say, in college, or in, in, you're not playing that many games, right? You don't have that grind. So that's really the only question for me now is can they, all the rookies, Eklund included, obviously, mm -hmm. can they handle 82 games worth of the most elite level of hockey, the most grindiest hockey uh, it, it, that there is in the world? Can they handle that? Uh, so that and, and that's not a question like I think that they can't or I'm doubting it. It's just... Who knows? It's it's very difficult. You see a lot of this with um, guys that are coming out of college, especially because college. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. I want to say it's forty ish games. It's about half the amount of the NHL. And then they come into the NHL, and at first they come. You know, out they're the running. Yeah, they're coming out the gates. Uh, first 10, 15 games, and then you kind of hit that grind, and you're just like, oh my gosh, like you have to be on top every single night and be on every single night. I and mean, we've talked about this before in shows where the skill level. Even between the first line and the fourth line guys, is there's a there's a little bit of a of a gap, but not much. It's the speed is just completely different. Um, anyone could really step in and play anywhere, almost. Not everybody. There's you know the superstar athletes yeah. that that really stand above a head and shoulders, but um, everyone else you can kind of plug and play in there, and uh, it's just it's the grind. Now imagine you're playing in Sweden. What size of country is Sweden? It's much smaller than the United States. So when you travel, you're not traveling as far. I mean, sure, you might be on bus and trains because you're so mm -hmm. close. But the United States, you're flying everywhere practically. I mean, especially for the sharks. You're not driving anywhere at the sharks. You're flying every single city. Even the closest ones, LA, Anaheim, yeah. Vegas, Seattle, those are all still flights. So um, San Jose typically has one of the larger or the longest yeah. um what do you call it, miles that they put in at the mm -hmm. end of the season. So it is a it is a big grind. Now imagine, you know, you get banged up a little bit, you, you block a couple shots or you take a hit, and then you got to get on a plane. I mean, yeah. they're, not, they're not on coach, but it's still like, it's a lot and it's a toll on your body and you're living out of a hotel. So um, it takes a lot of, of, of discipline. And that's why when you typically see players coming in, you're not seeing like, Eklund's going to be a great player. Yeah, He's going to be a good player all-star player. I don't know about superstar, but he's going to be an all-star player. Um, but you're, you're not going to see it for another three or four seasons, like getting really into that grind. Right around that third and fourth season is, season is when you start seeing those players really turn it up, getting used to the grind, and their bodies are used to it. And he's going to put on muscle. I mean, he's yeah. still young. So that's kind of typically where you're seeing these guys really come into their own about that third or fourth season. To your point earlier about... Um, you know the, the difference between the fourth line players and the first line players and how the skill level is fairly similar. We've talked about this before. One of the main differences and the things that makes you that first line player, that makes you an all-star is consistency. Mm -hmm. It's not that your skill level is so much better than you know somebody else on the team. It's that you're able to, to take that skill level and produce on a nightly basis doing that uh, time and time again. And again, that kind of goes back to what we had just talked about. Can they do it for 82 games? Yeah. If not, I think you're going to find them kind of working their way down the lineup. Well, look right? at the goal, the first goal, the shorthanded goal, that snipe. Yeah. Was, that, was it Bonina or Cogliano? No, Cogs. Cogliano. Yeah. He, he sniped that, and, and then you're kind of like, well, this guy's on the fourth line, yeah. and he's shorthanded, you know, penalty killer. Why don't they put him on the top line? <laughs> well, consistency exactly. is the key. He's, he's a great player, yeah. but consistency, he wouldn't be able to score that, you know, 50 see, goals a night or see, a season. And looking at that goal uh, as it was happening, I'm going, he's going to pass to Couture. Yeah. Because that, to me, is the higher percentage mm -hmm. play, knowing that you know, it's Cogliano taking the shot. If it was, you know, a, a Kevin LeBanc or Tomas Hurdle, I could see, okay, yeah, I'll fire that all day long. When when it's not, right, you're kind of yeah. thinking, okay, get it to the guy that has a higher percentage chance of putting the puck in the net because it ain't me. <laughs> um, maybe if he takes that shot nine more times, the defenseman did take it away. The pass. he laid it down. He took the pass away. Like he, he laid it down. Yeah. But I think most guys at this level know how to do a sauce pass. I'm just saying, you know. But hey, the puck went in. I'm just saying, if he takes that shot nine more times, maybe it doesn't go in. I right. don't know. In fact, when we talk about goalies, I want to go back to that goal because I got a point to make. Uh, but we're not quite there yet. We're still talking about rookies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of rookies, uh, Dolan. 
Yes. Now, I, I want your take on Don. I thought he played well. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't extremely noticeable. He didn't really get in the stat sheet. But I thought he played well. He almost got in the stat sheet. Yeah. Remember the rob? Oh, yeah. Hellbuck robbed him. It was, I, yeah, he robbed him. I yeah. looked at the replay. I'm like, okay, that was a really good save. Uh, he kind of flubbed the shot. It wasn't a hard shot. If he got if he got a hold of it perfectly yeah. and put that, that was a goal. That, that's even then, like Hellebuck was lucky to get his yeah. glove across, and he stretched and got it. I started cheering uh, before uh, as soon as he was winding. Yeah. To, I was like, it's in, and then he, had, he flubbed it. Mm-hmm. I think even he was shocked. Like, yeah. How did how did he save that? Which, by the way, he looks like Eric Carlson. To right. me, he looks. Yeah. He, I mean, especially with the haircut. That's because he got the haircut. Yeah. So I missed anyway. the flow. I missed the flow. <laughs> I'm sure he'll slowly grow it back during the season. Probably. Probably yeah. one haircut a year. Kind of like Burns. Burns shaved his head. Yeah. Just so he can slowly grow it back. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I thought Dolan looked pretty good. Um, even without the puck, I thought he did a yeah. decent job. I think uh, he'll stick around for a little while. I mean, he's he's on a one way contract. Yeah. So he's got something to prove because it's only a one year contract as well. Um, yeah, I was I was happy with them. It but again, this was the first game yeah. of the season. Like what I'm excited for is to see what we're going to be talking about in a week after our next show because there's four games coming up this week. What do we always say? Give it 20 games. We usually like Thanksgiving yeah. 20 games. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's so, you kind of see where the where the cards fall. We always I mean, at least the last couple of seasons, yeah. it feels like we have to like okay guys, calm down, you know, cuz <laughs> Because we're not as bad as you think we are, and, and we turn out to be. But we're not, we always say we're not as bad as you think we are. Give it twenty games. Let's wait till twenty games. And like now, it's kind of the other way around. It's like okay, don't get too excited. Yeah, right? it's only game one. Let's wait it's for twenty expectations games. Expectations were low going yeah. into the season, and now you're like, oh, oh you we, guys did up here. You like, gotta wow. win. <laughs> yeah, a win against I think a good team. No, it's a good team. Winnipeg's a good team. Yeah, I mean, you called Connor Hellebuck an elite goalie. He is one of the top goalies in the league for sure he he also is one of one of the very few workhorse workhorse goalies uh him and vasilevsky in tampa bay pretty much the only two that really play probably over 60 games Mm -hmm. or close to it this year which only leaves less you know 20 games for their backup to play it's not very much so one of the two in the league that can do that and he plays like i mean you saw the save imagine like he probably has one of those kinds of saves every night you're probably going to win more games than lose when you have a goalie doing that. Yeah. So, and some of those goals were garbage goal, not garbage goals, but you know what I mean, like the rebounds and stuff. So, which good on the Sharks for doing. I'm very happy with yeah. how they played. Um, but yeah, anyway, he's a good goalie. Yes. Yeah. He's one of the best. And we'll talk about uh, our goalie uh, after this topic here <laughs> um, team chemistry. Uh, we, we thought the team chemistry and, and the culture, I guess. Uh, look, look pretty good on the ice uh, uh, last night when, when they played. So absolutely, we had we had Tomas Hurdle standing up for his teammate. Balsers, uh, we had right? yeah, Balsers, yeah. who uh, he got shoved into Hellebuck. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the replay, man, he scored the goal, yeah. and then the guy just kind of shoved him and skated away slowly, and he jacked Hellebuck like he got he yeah. hit him pretty hard. I would be pissed too. Yeah, like if I was on Winnipeg, I'd, I'd be getting in his face like, hey, come on! But like, it's your fault. It was yeah. You know, but you still gotta yeah, sure. stick up for your goalie. Like I don't blame them, but at the same time, it was they're they're hurting themselves, right? And they hurt themselves because they right. got a, a penalty for it so, too, an extra penalty. And, and we'd heard like all preseason long about how you know this team, um, the chemistry is off, and we, everything with Kane and and all that jazz, right? So mm-hmm. it was kind of nice to to be able to. Now in preseason, you kind of expect that there's going to be the young guys trying to prove something. Get themselves in the lineup, throw their, their fists around and everything there else. There were a but, lot of fights in preseason. Yeah, but yeah. this is, now we're talking regular season. Mm-hmm. And as you had mentioned, I think, in a previous episode or even like last season, mm-hmm. uh, the Sharks were the last team in the NHL to have a fight under their belt, which kind of tells you how much they, they weren't really sticking up for each other. Right. And in this game, fight game <laughs> one, right? Uh, and it was Middleton. Yeah, Middleton fought Lurch. Lurch. Yeah. Uh, Stanley. Stanley, yeah. number 64. He's Stan- six foot seven, seven, by the way. Ridiculous. Plus skates, so he's probably six nine, yeah. six ten yeah. on the ice. That's scary. Man. That's ridiculous. He stood out when he was skating on the ice. I was like, man, that guy's big. Yeah, he's really big. And then when he was fighting Middleton, Middleton's not small. He's a big dude, six four. I think so. And he looked like uh, <laughs> he looked like Eklund fighting Chara out there. Like he just looked so small. 
But yeah, he held his own. I thought he held his own. Yeah. I think the only reason he got uh, tackled is because the guy's six foot seven. And I think he got mad because he took a couple pops yeah, from Middleton. Did. Middleton landed, I think, two or three hits on his face. So he's yeah. like, okay, I'm done with this. So, um, you know, again, it's, it's you know, they, they right away we see this kind of camaraderie uh, between uh, the Sharks players. And I think it was it was noticeable um, on and the ice even after the whistles. Yeah, it's too bad Hurdle didn't get a fight because he would have gotten a, a Gordie Howe. Gordie Howe yeah. hat trick. Well, we, same, same with Weatherby. Right. Well, Calder. he but he had like kind of a fight. Calder. Hurdle kind of had a fight. You know <laughs> yeah, I mean? that's true. Like, he had a roughing penalty. It could have been. Yeah. They could have called it. A okay. Fight or whatever. Sure. Anyway, fair enough. Okay. The refs messed them up. Uh, let's. So the the last thing I want to talk about with team chemistry, and we couldn't talk about team chemistry without bringing up Vander Kane. Right. Okay. Last season, um, again, they had the, they were the last team to have a fight. Um, I think Evander himself had said at one point that. You know, he felt like he had to stand up for himself because nobody else was doing it for him or, or with him. He just kind of mm-hmm. felt like he was on an island. I mean, we saw this time and time again yeah. last the last two seasons, I would say, where uh, somebody would take a liberty with one of the Sharks, hit yeah. him, and nobody would come in and step in right away. Yeah. Uh, they started to kind of change that last year. I remember a couple times where somebody got hit, and I remember Hurdle, I think it was Hurdle, going after uh, somebody kind of not fighting with them, yeah. but getting in their face, right? And I was like, oh, finally, someone's yeah. doing something about this. And the last night, or I guess, yeah, it was last night's game. Um, we saw that it wasn't just that one. It wasn't just the Balsters thing. There was a couple incidents yeah. where they came together and, and stuck up for each other. Yeah. Um, so it is It is like Bob Bugner finally getting through to these guys. It's great. It's great to see. Well, and it's it's the timing that's interesting for me. Mm-hmm. Bob Bugner finally getting through to them when Evander Kane is not in the lineup. Now, this is a guy that is kind of known as the fighter on the team, and I don't know why because, again, he's only fights like twice a season. Is He corrected me when I asked a question that time. Well, he is named after Evander Holyfield. I get it. He grew up I get boxing. it. Um, but when it comes, when it's said and done, he's the guy that is going to step up for teammates, usually in a physical sense. Although he may not drop the gloves all the time, he's the guy that they have to answer to. But going right? back to that quote you said of nobody yeah. sticking up for me, that made me think, hmm, yeah, maybe there's a reason for that. Yeah, I, and and maybe so. There's probably a little bit of truth to this whole they didn't want him back in the locker room thing. Um, you see it right away that they're sticking up for each other in the last couple seasons. It wasn't happening with him there. So um, I don't know. I, I don't like to feed into uh, rumors necessarily. I don't know if that's necess- a, a rumor because it came from like Kurz, I think. And he's a reliable source. If he says mm-hmm. it, it's usually that's that's how it is. So I'm not questioning that at all, Kevin, if you're watching. Um, but it's, it's just kind of, you know, it, it's a weird situation. Um, and to see them respond very differently in the first game of this season with yeah. him not on the ice as compared to the last two with him there, uh, maybe is a little bit telling about how truthful that story is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree okay. with that. I, I, I mean, after the game, we talked about this, and I just said, Evander, who? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Sharks didn't need him. Everyone yeah. was worried that oh, our leading scorer, yeah. point getter, everything. I was too. Yeah, he's yeah. not going to be there. Who's going to fill those those shoes? Yep. Nobody. Which we talked about, but. It, it's a different feel on this team. Yeah. Much it, different feel. It's very strange to think that the team looks better off and has better chemistry without the tough guy and leading score from last season. It's just, it's a it's a different world. Uh, but hey, uh, if they're better off for it, I'm all for it. So um, yeah. whatever. Next topic. <laughs> We're going to move on to Aiden Hill, Sharks goaltending. Now, uh, I wanted to get back to something we said about uh, Connor Hellebuck, and I mm-hmm. will in just a second. But... Um, to everybody who was dogging on Martin Jones for his entire career. Um, it, again, it's one game, one game, but Aiden Hill ended the night with an 870 save percentage. Will the Sharks have any goaltending ever that's over 900? It's just, <laughs> I looked at the stat, I was like, you got, come on. Like, I thought he played pretty well. He did. But, ah, oh, that's, I now, mean, one of the goals was a tip. So yeah. he was about to glove it and it got tipped, so it kind of fell out and then they got the rebound. And then the other goal was the shorthanded goal, yeah, which uh, was just a broken play, kind of. Yes. The puck was kind of, it went right next to the goal, so it bounced off the boards and came back to him. He went to go play it away up the boards. Carlson was skating at it, thinking he was going to dump it and leave it for him. Hits off of Carlson, goes behind to a guy. Aiden Hill throws his stick around to kind of poke check, kind of, yeah. from the guy from behind the net. The guy plays it right under his stick, right into the crease, and a guy 
comes in and one times it through the five hole because he didn't have a stick in right. position. It's like, are you kidding? Like that's not that's not a normal play. That's a that's a hustle play by Win- Winnipeg. Yes. To, to take advantage of a mistake in yeah. the back. That's all that was. And and for anybody to look at that play and be to, to talk poorly <laughs> of Aiden Hill for that play. Um, I don't know. I think the guy was trying. He was trying to fix a mistake that happened off of a pass that went off of Eric Carlson's skate. These are not typical plays. These are not where he's set. The shot's coming. He misses it. Right. And I hear people saying, I think it was you, not you saying it, but you right. bringing up that other people had called that goal soft. Okay. <laughs> I'm so tired of this word. Paul gets triggered. I'm so. I'm. It's trigger warning. Okay. When people use the word soft in, in refer, a reference to a goal uh, about the Sharks goaltending, it, it just, it's, I, I don't even know how to respond anymore because like every single goal that goes in is now a soft goal. <laughs> there is no such thing as a goal that, oh, that's okay. The goalie, you know, probably wouldn't have made that. Same you know what anyway. I would consider a soft goal? The plays that are like where they're on the goal line against the boards and they throw it to the goalie and it hits his skate and goes in. I think that's a soft goal. I think goal. that's a fluke goal. You know what I think is a soft goal? One where you are lined up perfectly. The shot is visible to you. You are set. You are ready to go. They shoot it and you just don't save it. <laughs> that is a soft goal. You know who had a soft goal? Roman Turek against Owen Nolan from the half line. Sure. In the playoffs. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Um, Connor Hellebuck. Oh, yeah. yeah. He had a soft goal uh, scored on him. You know by who? I'd say two Okay, in that case. I'll say I'll say the one that I'm thinking of, yeah. Cogs, his goal. Yeah. That was soft. I'm sorry. It's a two-on-one, yes, but you know what? He's got the defenseman laying down. The pass didn't go across. He was lined up straight to that shot. He had that shot zeroed in. He was ready to go. Now, was it a snipe? Absolutely, 100%. It was a snipe. It was perfectly placed. Regardless... He was lined up, facing the shot, no obstructions, no distractions. He was right there the entire way through, and he let it go in. That, my friends, is a soft goal. Not one that is pinballing all over the place, (laughs) where the goalie scrambled. Would you rather him stand still and not do anything? Because I would rather him try to be active. Yes, he swung his stick. He was trying to prevent the guy from wrapping it, I think. I don't think he was trying to prevent the pass. I think he was trying to prevent the wrap. Yeah. So I think he swung his stick doing that. And in doing that, yes, he opens up his five hole a bit. And the pass comes out right in front of him to the slot. <laughs> My question is, where's the defense? Well, it was power play. They weren't even expecting that to happen. That's, but that's even worse yeah. excuse. It's the power play. They have extra players. Where's the defense? So I don't know. For me, I, I have a hard time calling that a soft goal. Um, I know, um, and see, it's not just Martin Jones. I know exactly what you guys are saying. I'll point to this camera too. I don't care. I'll point to all the cameras. That I, we have a problem with the fan base calling every single goal a soft goal. It's just the and I'm a goalie apologist. Call me that if you want, but I can see what's happening on the ice, and it's not a soft goal. Okay. There, I said it, and I'm moving on. Are you good? Soft goal. <laughs> <laughs> Positioning. You thought Aiden Hill's positioning was a little suspect. I'll, I think he, I'll, I'll give you this. Go ahead. I think floor. he needs a little work on the positioning. Okay. He kind of overcommits. It's almost the complete opposite of what Martin Jones was. Martin Jones liked to stick positionally wise. That that's what made him a good goalie. Yeah. When he was good, was his positioning was always pretty pretty good. Um, to me, Aiden Hill's a more aggressive goalie. So he really challenges shooters. Comes out and he slides a lot. So when he's when the when the puck crosses over and he has to get all the way over the goal, he'll slide over. And he's said this before that he needs to work on it, and he's gotten better at it because he gets out of position and he slides too far. So there's a couple plays where he just kept sliding. Yeah. It's like, oh man, like he, he's leaving the net wide open for a tap in. And fortunately, Winnipeg wasn't able to take advantage of it. Uh, but it is a much different feel for a goalie to, especially that large of a goalie, yeah. to be moving that fast and across and and sliding that far out of position. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if during the season when he's playing, not Reimer, that you're going to see him kind of slide out of position for a tap-in goal because teams will probably be looking for it at some point. Yeah. So that that's all. Like I I think um, Nabokov's probably going to work with him on it. Oh yeah. So I think uh, he's going to improve. He's still a younger guy. He's still only you know so many starts in the NHL. It's not very many. So he's only going to get better, fortunately, versus Martin Jones, who I feel like got worse. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I think you're right. I think uh, Evgeny Nabokov is going to take to him right away, and, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to see some improvements in, in his game. Certainly, you're not going to see 870 for the uh, <laughs> remainder of the season. At least, I hope not. Oh, goodness. 
uh, regardless. I mean, part of it was they didn't have very many shots. It, yeah. There's only 23 shots on goal. That is true. Whereas the Sharks had over 30. Yeah. I think that's more of a typical night is around 30-ish shots. Yeah. So if that got up there, then you would have been really close to 900. If they were over 33 goal, or 33 shots yeah. and three goals in, that would be 900 saves. Exactly. Center. So I think uh, part of it was, I think the Sharks were doing a good job blocking. Um, and, and to me, a lot of the offense, at least trying to be created from Winnipeg, was from the point shooting and getting tips or rebounds. So, and a lot of those are getting blocked. So um, I, I bet we'll see more shots against in some of these games coming up this that, week. That was actually one of the stats that we had looked up when we were looking at some of the other uh, stats for the players, the, mm-hmm. the, the goals, the assists, and everything else. And then the time on ice, we, we saw quite a few uh, block shots. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, now some of those might have gone in. You could argue, okay, fine. Uh, but I think your point stands. You know, If he sees a few more shots and he's making those saves, uh, that save percentage jumps up just a bit. I mean, I do like how, I don't know if you noticed, but he's he does a good job of getting eyes on the puck, especially for moments of the point when there's a lot of traffic in front because mm-hmm. he's so big, he can look over players. So he does a good job better than I think. I think Martin Jones really struggled in that yeah. area. Um, there was a, so many goals that came in where he never even saw the shot yeah. coming in and, and just went right through. So um, I think he does a better job of doing that. So I think kudos to the Sharks for finding Aiden Hill to be the solution at least I guess, for the non-Martin Jones era. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he does a good job and excels there. We will see. Uh, game one. So he, he's another guy, actually, that kind of is um, subject to that, can he do it for 82 games? Well, not 82, obviously, but can he do it for the entire season? It's you know, it's still quite a grind. And like you said, he's only got a handful of games under his belt. So um, he's another guy to keep an eye on in terms of can he keep up? Mm-hmm. So uh, moving on from him, uh, we just talked about blue line, Shots, shots blocked. Um, obviously, when we talk about sharks, we talk about blue line. Usually, we're talking about Burns and 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 Hurd- I'm sorry, Burns and uh, uh, Carlson. Carlson and Ferraro, mm-hmm. right? Um, Vlasic and Shimmick uh, last night. Not not the best showing. Uh, I know plus minus isn't the best stat, but they were minus two on the night. Mm-hmm. Um, and Vlasic, I think, had 14 minutes of ice time total. And Shimmick had what ten minutes of ice time total? Uh, I think they were close to the same. But yeah, yeah. I'm pretty. Yeah, twelve. So they, he had twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Yeah. Sorry, a little less. So they they didn't have very much ice time whatsoever. Uh, even Middleton, I think, had sixteen minutes of ice time. Middleton yeah. stepped in, played pretty well. If we're talking about defensemen in this during the segment here, um, I thought he did okay. I was kind of surprised because yeah. I remember watching him last year, thinking this guy's pretty much in the lineup for his brutality. I guess you can call it like just kind of added muscle into the lineup as a protectorate of some of the other players. So I wasn't as impressed last season as I was this year. Now, he didn't get a fair shake because he had so many injuries. I think he had a lot of head injuries yeah. last year. Hmm. Um, so that took him a while to kind of get over. But um, I was impressed, and and it's funny he had a head injury, and yet he got in a fight like <laughs> last night. Like, come on. Um, but, yeah, I think I thought he looked good. And he the extra two minutes that he had over Vlasic was all on – the penalty kill. So he's he's uh, he's a bigger guy. He's going to block more shots, kind of like Burns. Like that's why Burns plays so much penalty kill because he's going to block so much. So um, I was I was I wouldn't say I was impressed by him, but I, he didn't stand out in a bad way. Yes. So he was unnoticeable other than the fight in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, not 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 really any mistakes in the back end or anything. I thought he had a pretty solid game. Yeah, and, and you know, his 16 minutes of ice time, I, he would have had maybe another minute or two of that at least, right? Uh, except for he was in the box for five minutes plus mm-hmm. because of the fight. So, um, you know, it, it's just kind of interesting seeing how he's kind of vaulted past <laughs> a guy like Vlasic, which is telling. Um, it's it's very unfortunate, the fall of Marco Dor Vlasic. I know. I, I was hoping for a big rebound year for him and then hopefully deal him somewhere. Yeah. Someone would take a chance on him and yeah. then maybe send a bad contract this way to even it out, kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because I feel like he just needs a new a change of scenery. I don't think he's a bad player. I think no. he's. I like what you said uh, an episode or two ago, whatever it was, um, Martin Jones burnout. Yeah. I, I think I, I, I like that. I like the idea that maybe he was just kind of like, what the, what's the point? Yeah. Right? And it just kind of wore at him. Because uh, I don't think he's a bad player. I don't think he just all of a sudden forgot how to play defense. Right. Um, and I think, again, a change of scenery would do him well. And I want him to do well. Um, if he was doing well in Teal, it would be better. But, I, you know, I, don't, I have no ill will towards the guy. So if that's what he needs, 
gosh, I hope he gets it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was the same thing for Martin Jones. I was hoping him going to Philly would would kind of help him out as well. Just you know, change of pace, change of scenery, change of uh, personnel in front of him maybe would help him out as well. But it, I don't know if that seems to be the case. The only time I saw Martin Jones, he got <laughs> scored three goals in the first period. Uh, I don't know what he's done since then, but it, I haven't bothered to follow. So um, anyway, that's kind of uh, what we're looking at with the goaltending side. We haven't seen James Reimer in net yet. We've already know what he can bring. We're Probably. pretty confident in him as a backup. We'll see him this week. Yeah, there's four games this week, so right. I, he'll be in at some point because there is a back to back. Yeah. So um, I, like to me, I feel like we'll probably see Aiden Hill two games and then Reimer for one game. So it'll be like yeah. two, one, two, one, two, one. So I think Aiden Hill will get a little bit more games. And if he starts to struggle, then they'll switch it. Mm-hmm. Um, but not quite the hot hand. I don't think they're going to go every other game yeah. kind of thing. No, I agree with you on that one. So are you feeling more confident about this team now? Yeah, I am. I, uh, I, I think I tweeted about this when I got home last night that that was one of the best games that I'd seen in, uh, in a couple years. I think it was, it, I mean, going to a live game is always better. Last year was awful because we couldn't really go to any. Um, but seeing a fight in person, mm-hmm. a win in person, a uh, lot of goals. So it was four to three. So it was exciting. It was back and forth a little bit. Um, I just, I think, I feel more confident in this team, especially when they're sticking up for each other. Uh, they're not going to get pushed around. And I think I said before the game, I wanted to see kind of a, a dirty, scrappy mm-hmm. goal. And because the Sharks just haven't really been doing those lately in the last couple of years. Um, I feel like they've added enough grit. And then there's a good tweet, I think, from Kurz about uh, he names off like all the players the last two seasons that were on the opening night roster that aren't even in the league anymore or even in North America anymore. Uh, definitely not on the Sharks, but yeah. n- some of them aren't even in the league. So um, that just goes to show like the talent that's come in the pool of guys in the last two seasons that have yeah. been drafted, um, how much better the Sharks prospects and everything coming up is. Um, I mean, we'll see some of those guys like Shemaleski. He might not even make this team anymore because he's gotten surpassed by other guys yeah. on the depth chart. So I think uh, the Sharks are in a better spot. I don't. I still don't know if I would quite say it would be a playoff team only because the way that they're going to be playing, I don't know if they can sustain that for all 82 games. I don't know if these guys can sustain it for 82 games. Yeah. Uh, it's a war of attrition. If one other big guy, if Hurdle gets hurt, I think they're done. That's that's what I I think. Okay, um, I'm gonna read a quote and I'm gonna look it up on our little Slack channel that we have here. We have, we have a exclusive Fin Factor Slack channel. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just gonna read this straight because I took a little screenshot of it. Uh, this is me on October 9th. By the way, I'm not saying this quote as of uh, after the win, and I'm not high off the win and just saying this. Okay, this is from October 9th. All right, so you're you're tooting your own horn here. I am, and right. I am. I, you call me out at the end of the season. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, I said, Aaron, I'm putting my foot down. We're making the playoffs, and we're not getting bounced in the first round. <laughs> Blind freight train optimism from Paul. Okay, that's what we're getting. Yeah, that's pretty optimistic. Well, you said, geez, that's ambitious. <laughs> 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 so. There you go. Uh, I, that's, I'm, I'm, as long as we don't have the injuries, I think. As long as we don't have the, the specifically that's the, the hurdle. That's yeah. yeah. Um, if, if if the kids can stick it out for 82, if the kids can stick it out for 70, you know, uh, and we're not looking at any major injuries, I th- I feel like this is a team. And again, this is before yesterday's game. This is before the win. Okay, I'm looking at. I know. Yeah. I get it. Okay. I'm still not. I want you to think. I'm confident this is going to be a better season. Okay. But I'm still not quite confident that it's going to be a playoff team or a contender team. You don't think the Pacific Division's weak enough? I think it is weak. I just don't know if the Sharks are going to be strong enough. And I think what's going to happen is they're going to be right in that middle. Okay. Too good to, for a lottery pick and not good enough to either make playoffs or go deep in the playoffs. There you have it, folks. I would like your comments. Uh, down below there am i off my rocker is aaron too pessimistic <laughs> are we somewhere in between uh tell us what you think again it's not after the first game but uh it'd be nice to be able to look back on this episode and see how far off we really were yeah we'll come back to this yeah at the end of the season very good i love it okay um let's talk about next games here we've got four as you said mm-hmm. coming up across the week 
uh, from Tuesday to Sunday, uh, all of them away games, mm -hmm. and they're doing the whole East Coast tour, right? Uh, East Coast and Canada, yeah, because they're going to be playing, let's see, Tuesday is Montreal, Thursday is Ottawa, Friday in Toronto, which is a basically a scheduled loss doing a back-to-back -back from Ottawa to Toronto, and then Sunday in Boston, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a morning game for us, uh, 1 p.m. game in Boston, but 10 a.m. here. So... Um, yeah, that's that's this is this is where I'm excited for the show yeah. next week, next Sunday night, um, when we do this because I want to see how the cards fall with all these players, and and this is a pretty serious road trip for uh, the new guys, and uh, a lot of games, a lot of hockey yeah. coming against good teams too. This is where we're talking about can they handle the grind? I mean, we got Montreal who was in the finals, mm -hmm. Boston who probably should have been in the finals last year, still a good team, um, Ottawa not so good, but Toronto. Still a very good team. Superstars. Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, scheduled loss. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, the second of a back to back against a really good team. So uh, we'll see how that all plays out. Now, I may have to eat my words in the first week. If they lose four straight, mm. it's going to make me look pretty bad. I don't think they'll lose four straight. I don't know. Uh, I hope they don't lose four straight. <laughs> All right, what's your, what's your prediction? It's a soft goal. Yeah. It's a soft goal. Yeah. yeah. Super producer Jason says uh, it'll be the soft goals that kill them. It's, it's you guys calling everything soft that kills me. Whatever. What's anyway. your predictions here? My predictions? Uh, I, we're definitely going to win in Ottawa. <laughs> okay. I think we definitely win in Ottawa. I think um, the, the game against Toronto is going to be the back-to-back. -back. They throw Reimer in that game. I think you see Aiden Hill the first two. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I think you're right on Toronto. I think we lose that one. Not in spectacular fashion, uh, but I think they're just going to not have the legs. They're just going to be tired. Um, so I'd like to see, you know, two. I'd like to see two out of the four. Uh, that'd be nice. Uh, again, Boston's a really strong team as well. So uh, either that first game against Montreal or Boston's going to be a battle. But I think we can win one of, of those two. I'd be happy. Uh, let's see. I think it'll be two wins. But I think it's going to be the first two games. I think they beat Montreal, beat Ottawa, lose to Toronto because they're going to be tired. And then Boston, they're going to want to be getting out of there and I think Boston's gonna just run them over so one more bold prediction we're, we we win in Montreal Montreal sees how good Mark Edward Vlasic is and wants to make a trade <laughs> uh, I would be happy <laughs> I would be feeling much better about this team if we came in with three wins yeah if we got if we got three wins or points in three of the four games I would say okay this okay. team is is starting to persuade me the other direction. All right, I, I'd be I'd be happy with two wins or like you said, points in, in, in three or four would be great. Even if they were overtime losses, mm -hmm. I think I'd be happy uh, with that uh, that outcome. So there you go. Again, in the comments, let us know what you think about this team uh, for this coming week. Uh, if they have any chance whatsoever against these guys, are we just being way too optimistic? Um, <laughs> I feel like that's part of this, the show though, is to, to to bring optimism to the fans, right? Right. We've had so much just for the past couple of years, you know. I'm excited about this team. Same. I, I'm I'm happier about this season than I was the last two seasons. You know what else I'm happy about? I'm happy that uh, for you guys that Super Producer Jason has forgotten to take down the <laughs> preseason sale. Everything on the store is still 30% off. Prices as marked. In fact, I've got another thing I got to pull up on my phone here, and you guys can't see my passcode. Um, we have Debbie. Saying, I forgot to tell you to uh, have my hat on at the farmer's market yesterday and a vendor asked me about it. She loves the sharks and we'll be looking the fin factor up. Beautiful. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for uh, wearing our hat out in public and not being embarrassed. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's nice. And I'm sure you look phenomenal doing it. So, hey, thank you for uh, getting to the farmer's market, getting some nice uh, fresh organic cucumbers. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and and showing off the, the show to everybody there at the farmer's market. We do appreciate that. Yeah, what? thanks. <laughs> Nothing, man. <laughs> Wow. Artichokes? What? Fava beans? I don't know. What's at farmer's markets? Kettle corn. Do you ever go to farmer's markets? Yeah, I do, but not that often. Okay. Tortillas okay. to throw at Aaron. Tortillas to throw at Aaron. That's what I need at the farmer's market. Thank you again, Debbie. We appreciate you. Okay. Is there anything else you want to bring up? Last second thing here? Uh, no. We just started our fantasy league. Okay. I'm happy that we have 11 other people other than me participating. Nice. And it's fun. I'll give you some updates later in the season. We're Very still new. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's going to wrap up the show. Um, I guess I'm just, I'm excited. You're excited. I'm very excited. We're pumped that Sharks Hockey is back. We're pumped that we could be sitting in the seats. And for, uh, what was his name? Ryan? Ryan uh, on Twitter. We should put this oh, one yeah. up too. Yeah, yeah. This is another one. We got to, I, I know it, Super Producer Jason hates tweets. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're going to put this up on the screen right now. 
uh, Ryan uh, found us at the game. <laughs> And he says, yes, I'm stalking you. He creepily took a picture of us. And, and the follow-up, here's the second image. Uh, it's us looking for him. <laughs> he takes I saw picture. the tweet and I was like, where is this guy? We're looking for him. He took another picture. Yeah, I, I just just as uh, as we're looking, I hear Aaron say, oh, I got another tweet. And I look over and it's us looking up in the direction. <laughs> uh, so I think it's, it might be Ryan Sontag, actually. I think the, yeah, yeah I think it might be him. Um, put it in the comments if that's you, buddy. Uh, but yeah, so so thank you for for that fun interaction. That was awesome. He came up to us after the game, uh, said hello and, yeah. and everything. We actually had a couple people come up to us. Yeah, uh, this game. Um, I want to say Mike from Section Two Twelve. Um, hey, what's up, Mike? It was good chatting to you Nick. too, buddy. We saw Nick. We again. saw Nick. Yeah. Nick HBK One Hundred and Fifty. What's up, Nick? Uh, Nick's a big fan of the show. Plays NHL and Predator and everything else with me yeah. <laughs> and stuff. So uh, you know, it's always fun having these fan interactions. Um, and actually one of the guy, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, but your son, Kian, uh, I was on the uh, Eye of the Sabercast uh, podcast right. for the, the local school, uh, talking with him and his uh, dad came up to me after the game and he said hello and everything. So uh, Kian and, and dad, hi, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Thanks for being fans. We appreciate you. It's the shout out hour. It is the shout. I like doing this actually. Hey, put that in the comments. If you guys want us to shout out more of your tweets, so Super Producer Jason can pull whatever little bits of hair he has left out of his head, uh, please let us know. Uh, and anytime you see us in public, please come by, say hi, snap a picture, and we can use it for the show just to say hi to our fans and shout yep. you guys out. I love doing it. So any last, that we're good? We're good? All right, good. cool. Guys, thank you so much. It's great to be back. I can't wait to do more of these and uh, be looking for a live, hopefully sometime in the coming weeks because we're not quite set up for live just now. We're still obviously not on our own set, uh, but we'll be doing these shows at least once a week still, right? Yeah. Yep. So be looking for us every so often, Monday-ish or so. Yep. Okay, so for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.